Hey up everyone, welcome to me uh, step two of my pub tutorial, this is Wiss. <laughs> if you ever hear a dog barking in any of my videos, this is the guilty party, this, a noisy little madam. So she's seen me that I'm doing something important, so she decided that she wants to be in on it, so this is why she's here now, sitting with me, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, if, you, if you've not seen my first video on doing the first layer of the uh, pug painting then uh, you're probably better off having a look at that first and I'll uh, see if I can manage to figure out putting a link to it up here somewhere. <laughs> if not then uh, I'll, I'll put it in description so you, if you've not seen it go and watch that first it is a bit long uh, but I'm, I'm trying to sort of you know own my video editing skills to speed them up a little bit um, but this is going to be step two where you build on your layers to get to the stage where you can start adding detail um, and then you know it's, it's just tidying things up refining things a little bit and just showing you how to do them steps getting ready for adding your final detail layer and then I'll do some more tutorials later on doing your final detail so anyway uh, let's get rid of this little munchkin <laughs> go on then go on go and then I'll uh, I'll see you in a second Right, so my colours I've got on at minute, um, I basically I'm going to be focusing on darker areas, muzzle, around eyes, this little patch at the top of here and ears. They're what I'm going to be doing first. And I've got um, black again. <laughs> and then I've got um, some white, um, which is uh, titanium white. And then I've got some cadmium red hue, because... Uh, you can see some like slight red hues around the mouth there. Um, and then I've got two blues. I've got uh, ultramarine blue and processed cyan. And yeah, I did um, make sure that that's how that cyan is pronounced. <laughs> and for once, I actually got it correct because that's all it, always how I've pronounced it in my head. Um, we are checking that how it was pronounced, and then when I looked it up. Uh, and there were a recording of it, it was actually pronounced cyan and I thought, oh, I got it right. <laughs> so there we go, processed cyan. And I usually like mix them two together to get the required, I probably, you know, could just get, you know, buy a blue already made that was sort of like, you know, in between these two, but I've, I just usually just mix a bit of these two together, you know, to get the blues that I want. But anyway, let's get on with it. So I'll start up here with this little bit and this time I'm using a, I can't see it because it's, it's all like um, worn off but I think it's, it's a number 8 I think, I've got another number 8 there and it's the same size as it so I think it's a, a number 8, another Cotman round brush. So I'm just going to start uh, adding a few like you know strokes of at top of you know the the areas that were already sort of you know meant to be dark or black or whatever this time I'm being a little bit more methodical whereas before I just slapping it on pretty much right at, uh, I'll probably stick to darkest things first so I'll uh, And then I'll start adding a few like highlights, you know, where they need to be. So I'll just make these bases nice and dark first. Make sure there's no paleness of paper showing through. Yeah, so start doing your strokes, you know, in general direction of you know the the direction that the air grows in. You've got to get that right with pet portraits. It's um, you've got to learn sort of like the direction that the air, you know, actually grows in, and, and start doing your strokes in in the same direction as that. I mean, once you've been doing it for a while, you, it starts to become, you know, pretty automatic. But in the beginning, you know, especially when you're you're not experienced. 
people do often get it wrong with you know with the direction of the air growth and this is some of that you know when when I start doing modeling layer it's something that I do start to to think about a little bit more than you know your initial layer you don't really think much about that you're just getting paint onto paper but when you start tidying up you, you have got to start thinking about these things you still don't have to be like like really really spot on because obviously a bit more tidying up will go out it'll be happening and further on as well you know sometimes I, I do a couple of layers at modeling layer um, before I, I start doing the um, so it's like two sub layers before I actually start doing detail but it can it can depend on portrait actually and from what I, it is I'm painting sometimes it just so happens that it, it's it's ready for detail sooner and others just take it you know a little bit more layering up before you you get to that point where you can start adding final detail but again that's just some of that uh, it just comes you know when it's ready and it's just comes with practice and experience I mean like I say everybody's got their own way of doing this anyway you know, we get lots of like people who paint in realism and they probably you know all got their own process how they achieve what they want to achieve there might be some similarities but it's not going to be like exact for everybody but I mean what I've found I mean I, I sometimes watch tutorials that other people have done um, you know just out of, sometimes just out of interest or say if it's something I just like to see how other people do it because you know I'm, I can struggle with it a bit myself it, you know you can take little bits from here and the little bits from there so you, even if you, you don't like you know you've got your own way of doing things you, you can still pick things up from other people and the way that they do things and, and and that's another point is that when you're doing tuition what what I don't want is for people to paint exactly exactly like me and to put artwork that looks exactly like mine um, because you know it's just I see it a lot especially in photography community you know where you get people that do they've got a distinctive like style of not just shooting but editing as well and then they do these workshops and people like flocked at workshops because well you know they do nice stuff you know what I mean and it's you can understand people wanting to go and learn from them but they come away and it's like the stuff they produce is just you can't tell who's, who's taken it who's done it. it it might as well just be the original photographer that's that's done them all because the work's just exactly the same there's just no originality and I think you know it, it, is that really what what you want to be sort of like working towards to just be like a clone of the photographer that you know you and it's same for artists you've got to find your own style so taking little bits from you know from one artist's tutorials I mean if you, if you like watching tutorials on YouTube in general um, and then taking little bits from from others and just see what works for you and, and what you enjoy uh, the effects that you get from it or whether it you know I mean everyone's different what what you know technique works well for one artist it, it just might not you know somebody else just might not get to grip sweet very well for whatever reason no matter how much they sort of like watch somebody else do it and try and study how they do it they may, it, it just might not they might not just get to grip sweet so it's it's always worth you know um, taking little bits from, you know different bits from here and there and and coming up with your own like a little individual concoction of you know techniques and then you can produce some of that you know what you want is is when people see your work they're like oh I didn't even need to see your name on it and I could tell you'd done that I could tell it was one of yours and that's basically what you want you know you don't want to produce work that just looks exactly like next person's and believe it or not even in realism I mean you know, some people say it's just like taking a photo and it's not but uh, you can usually see like even in realism you can usually see like a style I mean I can often see like realism works and be like you know I, I can know just by looking at them which artists done them and people have said it about mine as well 
so yeah you, you, you do ideally need to sort of come up with your own your own way of doing things your own sort of like little concoction of techniques because you, you you want your work to sort of be unique to you and your style to be unique to you it's it's part of what like art's about you know you don't want it to be exactly the same as next person's so you can see um, with lights reflecting on the black there are like blue tones in them reflections you can see it like round here edges of ears there um, you know around little bits round here on the chin uh, even like up nose really and, and also at the top very top of that there's going to be some light coming down onto the dog from above probably you know a lighting house or something like that you know a ceiling light and it's reflecting right on top of that um, that bit of black on top of it there so that'll need some lighter tones added to it again don't go as light as what it is there because you want to be saving that for your final detail layer so just keep it a little bit darker so this is quite dark compared to where it will be but you don't want to be uh... otherwise uh, when you put your final you know highlights on they'll just not show up because you've already gone too light underneath them and I've made that mistake myself it's like oh, I shouldn't have gone too light too early and eyes have got a lot of blue in them as well reflecting not sure how old this dog is in the photos but I know a lot of older dogs start getting a little bit cloudy in their eyes as they get older I've got two or thirteen year olds and they've got quite cloudy in their eyes now and light reflects on their eyes I probably will do a secondary modelling layer for this one and I'll probably use a rigger brush for that one that's a little you know a bit on bigger side rigger brush if you're not sure about a rigger brush it's, it's like a liner brush quite long and thin it's really good for doing hairs and things I really hope Wisp's not going to start barking because she can hear a vehicle outside whenever she hears a vehicle out on the street she has to bark because she thinks somebody's coming to house but I need to start adding some reds to this area because around this mouth area there's some uh, there's some red tones sneaked in there as well. So it's a bit, little bit purpley at minute. Just added it to me, uh, the blue paint that I'm using, I've just added it to that. Not too much of it, just a little bit, just enough to make it the same as what it looks on there. Some areas where it's a lot darker but there's uh, red tones in it so I'm just going to add some more black and some more cadmium red a little bit on the chin here has got some red tones in it it's quite dark but you can see the red tones in it just can't really you will not be able to tell on camera you'll be watching it you'll not be able to see red tones in that very much I don't think anyway some burnt sienna yellow ochre and I'm going to start tackling the lighter areas at dog now now first things first um, the tops of ears like top of head there is reflecting some light off at ceiling from ceiling light so you've got a lot of ochres in there I've got some like purpley reds in this transition area between where light from what is probably a window in front of dog you can see it reflected in eyes is causing this reflection and then the light from the ceiling is causing this lighter reflection on top of here and in between these two you've got a, a darker area 
Uh, so you need to make sure you keep that darker area in between. You often get that effect when you've got two different sources of light and you've got the reflections. You often just have a little bit of a darker area just in between. And it's just the same on that ear as well but not quite as pronounced. And like I said, the, there's a much like warmer tones in these reflections. You know, with lights reflecting on ears, like, like warm, you know, ochre type tones and things like that so we'll get them slapped on so I'm just going to mix a bit of burnt umber and yellow ochre and I'll actually mix a bit, a bit of that, um, that dark reddy colour I made for aunt mouse I'll just mix a little bit that way as well it's still there so I'll just um, bump that on. To be honest, it could do with being a bit thicker. I put a bit too much water in that. It's a bit better. Just darken it slightly. So you don't want it to be too light because you want to save your your lightest. I mean, acrylic does tend to. Um, it does tend to dry a little bit darker than how you put it on. You've got to sort of get used to that if you use acrylics. Because it does darken slightly as it dries. It's usually not too noticeable. It's um, certain instances it's more noticeable than other instances. Now I'll do the other ear. Just a bit more white to lighten it up a little bit. Remember. You still don't want to be going too light because um, you need your final strokes, you know, your final detail strokes to show up. So be careful up here. I think I'll probably need a smaller brush just to get them a little bit, that bit in the middle there because it's uh, this brush is a bit too big for that. wrinkles have got quite a lot of dark hairs in them so I don't want to make them too light they'll look quite dark until you know like last stages because there are like you know a lot of dark hairs mingled in with these the um, the middles of these two wrinkles above the nose and you can see a complete change of air direction there it's like on top half the, the air's sort of like pointing that way and then in middle it sort of fans and then by the time you get down to this end it's it's growing like that way so you've got to take into account you know the the direction that the air is growing in as well When, when I'm using a brush to, to do hairs I'll sort of flatten the bristles when I'm mixing paint so if you if you look here I'm, when I've got it in the paint I'll sort of just wiggle it slightly from side to side and flatten it so it sort of looks like that and then you can put it on its side and start you know needs a bit more needs to be a bit darker that end anyway yeah, I'll flatten it like that and then and I do that with rigger brushes as well and then you can use like a, a corner just to get like your really fine lines so 
So each time you load with paint, just do that and flatten your brush because obviously it'll unflatten as you're using it. But that's what I do, just like brilliant paint, wiggle it like that to flatten your bristles a little bit. Then pull it out and it's nice and flat. If you look at these hairs on chest, you can see the, the way that they fan, fan outwards. So you've got this, this dark area comes down here, and, but up here the hairs are sort of like pointing pretty much straight to the side. But as you come down, they start gradually as you're coming down, pointing now. So down here they're sort of pointing towards the bottom. Whereas up here they're pointing, you know, to the side of the picture pretty much, you know. I mean, these are pointing slightly upwards, so they'd be like pointing to, to there. Just making sure you can actually see that. <laughs> and then this outer area, you can see the hairs are all just pointing down this way. So this area here, the, the air direction on this bit is totally different to the air direction on that bit so you've just got to like pay attention to things like that where the airs are actually, what direction the airs are actually growing in. Actually I can see some bluish tones in this area so I'll just add a little bit of blue to that. Adding some uh, little touches now to this layer. Just a little bit of lighter, but just round eyes because you can see where rims of eyes are. So I think that's uh, that's about it now. You know for modeling layer well for first stage at modeling layer anyway I probably will do another another stage to modeling layer where I tidy things up you know even more before I go on move on to um, detailed layer and I'll probably use uh, like I say a, a rigger brush maybe bigger ones just let me find it Find it nice. No, I've got one. I've got it here. So this is a number three rigger brush. Another cotton. <laughs> so yeah, you can say that. I do use different different brushes, but a lot of them are cottons. And this is a number three rigger brush. And I use that, you know, to you know start refining your your impressions of like fur mainly and start getting you know re just refining things like eyes and nose and what have you getting them ready for detail so that the the shapes let's street restart before and again it only films for about 30 minutes and then it stops i have to restart it so yeah you just uh When you finish this this layer, we you just tidy things up some. Then you can sort of move on move on to you know your detail. And I'll probably do a, a tutorial on you know the the wrinkles on the forehead. So if you if you're interested in watching that and you know watching me do the final you know layer on wrinkles, then um, just keep an eye out because I think someone did mention wrinkles um, that they'd like to see. They've, re they've recently done a painting themselves, I think, with a wrinkled, wrinkled dog. 
a very wrinkled forehead and um, and they felt that they struggled a little bit with it so they said they, they wouldn't mind seeing a, a tutorial on that and to be honest, I don't know if like there is any sort of tutorials on that on YouTube it's not something I've actually looked for I'd have to see if the there is actually any um, tutorials on that already and then just to you know as a follow on you know well preparing for the tutorial for, for wrinkles obviously I'd just um, again I do exactly the same with other brush where paint, paint I fan the bristles make it nice and flat and then you've got these two corners on end and you can do your strokes with them corners and get quite fine, line, fine lines with them with them corners it's a lot better than if it's, it's rounded you know bristles have like rounded off and I'll probably just start adding some like black hairs in there because there are a lot of black hairs mixed in So it's sort of, you know, obviously darkest where the the skin's like folded inwards. Again, just making particular take particular attention to direction at you know the the fur's growing in. And this is basically what um, what I'll be doing in preparation for. You know, between this stage and the detailing stage on the wrinkles, just adding these extra black hairs mainly. And then rest I'll show you in the uh, tutorial that I'm going to do, you know, for finishing off these wrinkles. But I thought I'd just show you this now and then uh, in the next video I can direct people back to this one and obviously the one before it you know to see the the run up stages on how to get to the point that I'll be at when I start that tutorial remember this little fanny now to air see it's just change completely changing direction in growth when I go on to detail layer, I'll, I'll probably still, I'll still be using a, a rigger brush for these, but I've got smaller rigger brushes for the final detail layer. This is like one of the bigger rigger brushes. You can get things done a bit quicker with this, but obviously, you know, your, your finest lines you can do with your, your smaller rigger brushes. They're a lot better than round brushes I find for doing airs and things like that. And plus, they, they hold a lot more paint as well. You don't have to reload your paint like literally every two seconds with these. So, anyway, you, you've got a sort of like little bit of an idea. And I just do the same with lights as well as what I'm doing here and just apply them to where, where they are. Um, but this is basically what the second stage at, you know, modelling layer entails. So, you just gradually start refining things more and more as you go along. I tend to get the, the darks down first and then they do the, the lights afterwards. But I'll, I'll need to do a lot more of this. But um, a minute, I'm, I'm going to have to stop because my dogs are going to want feeding. Um, and I need to go and prepare the food. And I just thought I'd just show you, you know, a little bit so you've, you've got an idea of what I do. So when I come back to me, my next tutorial on putting your final detail layer onto your wrinkles, you'll at least sort of, you know, how I got to that stage, I won't have been missed such a, a, a big block at process art and you think oh hang on a minute end of our last video they didn't look like that you know they've, they've been you know worked on more since then what's she done in that time so now you sort of know what I've done in that time <laughs> 
So that's uh, most of modelling layer down. Still some more work to do. But uh, already looking a little bit uh, more refined and tidy than what it did before after the first layer. Starting to see some impressions of fur and things now. Uh, and it's uh, and even just, you know, this level of work, you know, it's, uh, there's not, not really painstaking gone out yet, but it's starting to look more convincing. Um, you know, and even eyes are starting to look more convincing, starting to get a bit of life in them, things like that. Just just having that bit of blue in that I added earlier. I mean, they'll, they'll need some, like, you know, browns and things adding because you can see, you can just see a bit of rounds at irises. It's got really dark eyes, this dog, but you can still see a bit of brown around edges. I'm not, I've not added that yet because, to be honest, it, it doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, when I don't rest of my model inlay, I might just stick a bit on, but to be honest, I could just start, um, you know, detailing them really now. We aren't really doing much more to them. I'll probably just stick some of the highlights. Um, just you know, some of this just a little bit darker uh, because they're they're currently a little bit wrong anyway. You know, they they're not they're not precise these marks compared to how it looks in reference photo anyway. So they're, they're going to need slightly altering. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much done. You know, for for this session anyway. And like I say, I'll probably continue what I've just done round here, you know, with your lights in these areas. I'll only, I might only go very slightly lighter than this, because again, I don't want to go too light. You know, for your detail layer, but you want your, your last bits of detail, you know, to stand out. You know, your lightest highlights, you want them to stand out so you don't want to go too dark, too, too light at this stage. You want to save that until last. And the same goes for on body, what have you as well. So anyway, we'll leave it there for now. Um, I hope you've got something from it. I haven't bored you too much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.